Today we're going to look at light sources that we can use for studio photography. The first is tungsten or incandescent light. This is a continuous light source and has a very hard light and low color temperature, 3200 degrees Kelvin, which is in the red-orange part of the spectrum. One of the advantages of tungsten light is what you see is what you get. I'll switch this one on and you'll see what I mean. When I move the light into position or I move it up and down, I can see exactly what effect it's having on the object I'm trying to light. That is a key advantage of tungsten light. A disadvantage is they tend to get kind of hot. The other type is electronic studio flash. This has a daylight color temperature and it is a little bit softer light. As you can see, there is a flash tube surrounding what is known as the modeling light. Let me take it out, you'll see what I mean. Here I've removed the flash tube to show you the difference between the flash tube itself and the modeling lamp. The flash tube, as you notice, is coiled around in a circle. This makes it effectively a larger light source than the halogen bulb, which is the modeling lamp. The modeling lamp is just there to show you more or less what's going to happen with the flash. It is a small narrow filament contained by halogen gas. This halogen gas increases the bulb life and maintains consistent color temperature. That is why we use it for photography. We've talked about the studio electronic flash having a modeling light to guide you in positioning in a light source. While this works very well most of the time, there are instances where it can be misleading. Problems usually occur when you're trying to create a hard light effect with a flash, such as casting a distinct shadow as shown here. The modeling light is a small, sharp, and hard source. The flash tube, as we mentioned, has a larger surface area, and as we know, the larger the source of light, the softer it is. The shadow looks good here, nice and sharply defined, but look what happens when we fire the flash to make the actual exposure. The resulted shadow is a little softer. Using a tungsten light for this effect is a better choice since it is an inherently harder source and you can see exactly how the shadow will look when you make your exposure. One of the biggest advantages of flash is its ability to freeze motion. This occurs because the actual burst of light that makes the exposure has a very brief duration. In effect, it becomes a fast shutter speed. You do not have to set your camera for a high shutter speed for this to work. In fact, your camera shutter may not synchronize properly at a high shutter speed, shorter than 1 1 25th of a second, which would result in partially or completely blank images. Flash duration will vary with power output. As you can see from this chart, the speedatron units we use range from 1 2 25th of a second to as brief as 1 12 50th of a second at 300 watt seconds. The power output rated in watt seconds is directly related to light output. The more watt seconds, the brighter the light when the flash fires, but the slower the flash duration. Here's some examples of the freezing ability of Studio Flash, taken with a special Speedatron flash head containing four flash tubes. With only 400 watt seconds going into each tube, the duration is short, one two thousandth of a second, but the total light output was 4 times 400 or 1600 watt seconds. This allowed me to shoot at a small aperture, f16, for maximum depth of field. 